Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone this morning, whether you're one of our regular congregation, a visitor, or indeed if you're watching online, we're very glad to have you as always part of our service. Activity packs for children are available in the vestibule. And then really recommencing the activities. So quite a list of announcements now. They are on your order of service, but I'll run through some of the main ones. The BB, in fact, gets started tomorrow evening with the Anchor Boys and Juniors from 6.30 and then the company section from 7.30. New members, of course, as always, would be very welcome there. And uh, also, it's useful to have some additional help. So if you would be keen to help, speak to Gardner, please, about that. And the Girls' Brigade, they're having a registration evening in the McConnell Hall tomorrow evening from 6.15. And then their times of meeting are on the order of service for the following Monday. There'll be a coffee morning on Saturday the 9th in the Brown Hall from 10 till 12. Donations are in aid of the Coulter Hall Repair Fund. And there are flower arranging displays by Susanna Hazard. The following week, the Tuesday the 12th, the daytime bowling recommences and everyone will be made welcome at that. So if you haven't tried that before, there's perhaps a new activity for you. Talking about coffee then, there's tea and coffee after this morning's service, and we thank those who will serve that. Morning worship on Sunday the 17th will be led by the PW. And then on that evening, Valley New Methodist Harvest Service takes place, and that will have the praise led by Ballyclare Male Voice Choir. Next Sunday, the Sacrament of Baptism will be observed here at morning worship. <coughs> the sympathy of the congregation then is extended to Mr. Roger Peel and his family following the recent death of his father. Now, every Sunday is an opportunity to support each other in prayer, so please let us know if there's anyone you would particularly like us to pray for by filling in one of the request cards or, of course, by speaking to one of the elders or to our minister, who we're glad to see back and we hope he's had a, a restful holiday. So these are all the announcements for today's consideration and your prayers. As we come to worship, a moment to pause. In this space, sacred and holy, may we have ears to hear the song of life. May we make space for our questions and hopes, listening to holy words and finding their truth. And hear the word of God woven into our human lives and meet the one who invites us in word and act and worship. Let us worship God.
Let's pray. Dear God, you must have noticed how bossy we can be sometimes. You know how eager we are to tell others what they should do, but we don't want to do the things we should. There are some of our prayers when we even tell you, God, what you should do, rather than listening to what you want for us and for others around us. Dear God, please make us less bossy and more ready to listen to you and be more like Jesus. And as he taught us to say, together we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, there's a picture up on the screen now, thanks to our tech team at the back. Now, if you've got good eyesight, can anybody tell me something about the picture? What's it a picture of to begin with? Any ideas? What do you think, Ollie? It's people? Yeah. What kind of people? Can anybody make some of them out? Any guesses? Ollie? A builder? Aye. What was that, Connor? A delivery man. Yes. For all those of you who like your deliveries. Well spotted. Anything else? A doctor? Yeah. There was more than one, is there? Maybe a couple there. And uh, so, yes. Now, are they all the same? No? Are you sure? Do you know one of the funny things about grown ups is that when we look at pictures of people, the first thing that we see is the differences. The first thing we see when we're older as we look at differences. Except that's not how the Bible looks at people. Because the Bible looks at people in exactly the same way. In fact, the Bible right at the very start says that God created all of us in God's image, male and female. Each person's the same. Each person is created in God's image. You know, the funny thing is, if you only look at differences, we don't really like differences. A lot of us sometimes feel uncomfortable if somebody is different from us. And sometimes differences make people anxious or nervous or a bit worried because they think, well, if that person's different from me, maybe I won't get on with them. Now, that's not a really nice way to live, just being anxious all the time. But perhaps if we learn instead to look at people the way God does, and to see that they're exactly the same. Each person is loved and cherished because each of them are made in God's image and there's no difference at all. Makes you see the world in a very different way. And then you don't have to be worried or anxious because you see that the other person is just like you. Let's share a prayer. Let's pray. Dear God, we're quick to spot differences, but you love us equally. So help us to see your image in each other, to know that we are loved and cherished equally. In Jesus' name, amen.
A reading from the book of Exodus, the song of Moses and Miriam. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging water stood up like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue, I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Then Miriam the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women followed her with tambourines and dancing. Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. Both horse and driver he is hurled into the sea. Thanks be to God. You're the lion of Judah, the lamb that would slay. Send it to heaven and evermore will reign At the end of the age when the earth you reclaim You will gather the nations before you And the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified For wisdom and mercy and justice he reigns at the As the Father has told us, for these you have died, for the nations that gather before you. And the ears of all men need to hear of the Lamb who was crucified, who descended to hell, yet was raised up to reign at the Father's side. And the angels will cry,
Let us pray. Magnificent God, we bring you our praise and thanksgiving, as we always do and as you always deserve. But being thankful comes more easily to us at some times than at others. There are those once or twice in a lifetime days, moments of overwhelming gratitude and joy when the songs of praise come tumbling from our lips, unbidden and unedited. If this for us is one of those rare and heady days, then let our song escape through the walls and rafters for all the world to hear. There are other days when, try as we might, we cannot remember how it felt to be glad or believe that we ever will be again. The best we can do is to go through the motions of worship and hope against hope that one day joy will return. If this, for us, is one of those dark and dismal days, then hold us in the silence and let others keep the song going until one day we are able to join in. Then there are the ordinary, everyday times when joy is tinged with sadness and sadness lightened by gratitude and hope. Our faith comes with questions, big questions about where you are and why. If you exist, the world is as it is, but somewhere deep down, we know that you are and that you care. Love, your gracious love, is the air that we breathe it is in the soil in which we grow, and that is a song worth singing. God of fire and fury, God of gentleness and grace, today we bring our united songs of praise, each voice with its own distinctive tone. May you listen and be glad, and then, when the time is right, give us a new song to sing. In Jesus' name. Amen.
reading from the Gospel according to Luke, Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Thanks be to God. I take my sermon preparation very seriously. If you go over to the manse, like every manse, there's a study full of books, learned tomes full of lots of material about history and theology and philosophy and all the ethics of the day. And so for this sermon, I went to see the Barbie movie. <laughs> Barbie and Ken are having the time of their lives. They're living in the colorful and perfect world of Barbie land. But something has gone wrong. Barbie's mind is clouded with dark and anxious thoughts. And it leads her on a quest into the real world, accompanied by her faithful Ken to set things right. Except Barbie is shocked by what she finds. The disconnect between her world and the so-called real world. For in her world, the women are in power and perfection reigns. In the real world, men are in charge and she is assaulted within minutes of stepping into it. She ends up on the run from a group of executives wanting to put her back in her box. Did you like the movie if you've seen it? it made me laugh. It reminded me, though, when I was younger, we had an advert on TV for Coca-Cola. I'd like to teach the world to sing. Like all big multinational companies, they're going to tell us they'll change the world. Whether Coke or Mattel, I'm not convinced Barbie will change anything. But change is needed. I'm just back from my travels. One of the places I'm in all the time was Spain. And that kiss was in the news. It set social media and the news channels on fire in Spain. And then maybe you saw last week that the England manager, Serena Weigman, dedicated her UEFA Women's Coach of the Year award to the Spanish World Cup winners, as having noted that the FIFA president, Gianni Infantino, said that their success on the global stage had been spoiled by the actions of the Spanish Football Federation President, Luis Rubiales. A kiss, he said, it was just a kiss. It's not what she says. Lots of women have stories of abuse and being silenced by men using their position to dominate them. I remember my mother telling me that when she was starting her job, one of the senior men in the museum came up to her and told her, you should not be here. You have a husband and a child. I'm glad to know I was so problematic. You're taking jobs away from men. And when she was the assistant, becoming a curator for the director of the museum, there was debate as to whether she should be allowed a degree to finish for her master's. And she pointed out to me, there were some senior men had no degrees. This was her second one. She was too intelligent to listen to them. How often do women put up with this? How often do you girls put up with it in school? How often are you told that you're dust making a song and dance about things? Or for all of us, how do we discuss the role of women and men in society? What do we model for boys and girls as they grow? in a healthy and constructive way. Because there are lots of toxic debates, especially in social media. 
And because there are lots of toxic individuals promoting harmful ideas, in the news, one of them is Andrew Tate, accused of rape and slavery. And regardless of his alleged crimes, is sadly known to more of our teenage boys than anyone else. He promotes violence against women and encourages young men and teenagers to share and reshare his material online. Parents, do you know what your boys are watching? Boys, I have faith in you though. If you've seen his stuff, I know that you know evil when you say it. The truth is the only strong man is the one who does what is right. There's a bizarre individual called Jordan Peterson who has such crackpot ideas and a complicated life, shall we say. But he claims that maleness is inherently ordered and that femaleness is disordered, which is ironic given his life. And yet he's coming to Belfast within weeks on a European tour. Both of these men say the same thing. Women are lesser. In fact, if you allow women to be in charge, your society will fail. But we have to be honest in the Presbyterian Church. We continually have leaders who say that women are lesser. They can't be ministers by virtue of their biology. They're unsuitable. It's okay to dismiss the worth of female elders. So sure, at presbytery meetings, just walk out of the room if a woman is leading. You have no idea, perhaps some of you, of the sheer offensiveness of what some of our women put up with. One colleague in her recent installation service, the moderator of presbytery, refused to turn up because she's a woman. Don't be surprised if the ordinary person on the street hears about somebody like Andrew Tate or Jordan Peterson, but can't really tell the difference between these Christian leaders who say the same thing. Women are lesser. So how do we discuss these issues in a way that brings light instead of heat, that cherishes the God-given image in each of us, that helps our young people flourish, as Christians, we look to Scripture. But we also ask the question as we turn to Scripture, is how are we reading it? The Bible is not a book in the sense that you buy a novel. It's a collection of books. And it's not one voice. It's hundreds of voices recorded through the millennia. And we hold, as Scripture itself teaches in 2 Timothy 3, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So, if all those voices in scripture have legitimacy, then we need to ask, when we read scripture, are we making sure we're listening to them all? Have we been dismissing the voices of women in the Bible, their faith and witness that can shape our own faith and witness? It's too easily done. I was listening to broadcast service this morning. I want to be fair. This is an individual who was preaching. I respect, I admire their ministry. And at one point they had a phrase he talked about, and we believe in God, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of Moses, of David and Solomon and Isaiah. And I was listening thinking, you can still, you can still come around with this. Come on, there's a few more in there. Jesus, and I thought, yes, even at this point, and all the apostles. Oh, at least if it was a Roman Catholic service, poor old Mary would have got a look in. Here today, we have two women, Miriam and Mary. And this month, we're going to be paying attention to female voices in Scripture. And so we begin with Miriam. For her song and dance rings down through the centuries. This Miriam in our reading today was that same brave and resourceful young woman, tradition tells us, in Scripture, who ensured that her baby brother Moses was found by the Pharaoh's daughter and nursed by his own mother. She is the first woman 
to be called by one of the highest offices in Scripture, prophet. And the verse that she is attributed to with her song, the dance, is considered by academics to be one of the oldest parts of Scripture, the most ancient from the oral traditions that the books of the Bible came from. Her song dates before the book of Genesis. Also, I've read somebody else as well. The Israelites had to flee in chaos and darkness, taking only what they needed. But Miriam was the one who was sensible enough to remember that they might also have time for praise and packed a tambourine. But her voice is given equal weight to that of Moses. It is as essential as those of Moses and Aaron. And she reminds us that God alone is in charge. Not pharaohs or their men with their armies. Not strength or money. And in fact, God often favors the weak. And that triumphant cry of Miriam echoes through the centuries until it's given voice again by her namesake, Mary, they're the same Hebrew name. Another woman's voice proclaiming God's sovereignty. Those two women's voices are just one of many in Scripture. And if we do not listen to them, we will have an unbalanced faith. Worse, we will shape our communities in such a way that we don't see the equal birth of each other's voices. There is no place in Scripture for considering women lesser. With all their sins and failures, they are prophets, priestesses. They are judges. They are mothers. They are warriors. They're the mother of God. There is no place in Scripture for considering women lesser. All of us are called to proclaim and witness God's love made in that same image. So women, never stop making a song and dance about things, for it is your prophetic calling. And men, join in with them. Because together then we can bring our sons and daughters in faith up in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ knowing that they're equally cherished. Together, we can flourish as God's people to the glory of God. Amen. We worship God with our offering. Let us pray. Almighty God, we bring you the gifts that seem to be the ones you value most, the ones you can take and use, not our strength, but our weakness, not all that we know, but all we know we still have to learn, not our goodness, but our willingness to change and grow, not full wallets, but our empty hands and hearts, ready to receive the treasures that you know we need and that you alone can give. 
Gracious God, we come to you with genuine thanksgiving for all the many blessings of this life, for dangers avoided and troubles overcome, for relationships that are rich and fulfilling, for others that are tricky and troublesome but worth the effort of persevering with. Above all, we give thanks for your presence with us in good times and bad, in our triumphs and our tragedies, in our struggling to understand your ways. We give thanks for the stories of your people in the past, some of them recorded in the scriptures, some passed on from one generation to the next. Their knowledge, like ours, was only partial. They made mistakes, as we do, based on fear. But they kept on going, and you kept faith with them, inviting them to learn and grow, to trust in your goodness, to follow the light, to cling to what is right, and so to discover your peace, which goes beyond anything we can explain or understand. Loving God, you invite us to bring all our concerns to you in prayer, and so we do, not in panic or desperation, not expecting seas to be parted and enemies destroyed, but with quiet confidence that there is nothing that you and we together cannot face, nothing that your love cannot overcome. Especially this day, we remember Cecil, Ruth, John, Edward, and all those in our minds at this time. Be with them and all who love them. We pray for the church in these difficult and challenging times, made all the more difficult and challenging because we have forgotten who we are and what you have called us to be, not pillars of society, but pilgrims and refugees, not thriving entrepreneurs, but faithful servants, following the way of Christ, the servant king. Help us to stand firm, we pray, but also to be ready to change. Where there are disagreements among us, may we handle them with honesty and respect. Calm the fear in us that leads to anger and division. If dark thoughts intrude, lift our minds to think on all that is good, of all the reasons we have to be grateful. Most of all, for your never-failing love brought near to us, in Jesus Christ our Lord. And so this week ahead, Lord, open our eyes to your glory all around us. Amen. <clears throat> Just as we come to our last hymn, I want to talk through it very quickly. We're going to be singing Men of Faith Rise Up and Sing. And at first glance, you might question as to why I have chosen a song, Men of Faith, with our, our faith being, or with our theme being Women of the Church. But our first verse, I just want to have the men sing it only. I want us to sort of take ownership as men of our role in the church, in our lives, in our family lives, as to what we do and as to how we support other people in our congregation. And if I can draw your attention then to verse 2, we have only the women singing. This would be particularly keen to hear the, the voices of the women singing. In the church this morning we, we stand behind you and we would love to hear your singing voices and in our last verse we'll be singing all together um, we stand together as a church united men and women alike so i would like to particularly draw attention to verse two on this this morning but we'll have first one men only second verse women only and third verse we'll stand united and sing thanks folks Men of faith, rise up and sing of your great and glorious King. You are strong when you feel weak, in your brokenness complete. Shout to the north and the south, sing.
Rise up, church, with broken wings. Fill this place with songs again. Of our God who reigns on high. By his grace again we'll fly. Shout to the north and the south. Sing to the east and the west. Jesus is Savior to all. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon each of you and go with you into this week. And all God's people said, Amen.